Hi everyone. In this tutorial, I would like to continue uh, introducing the Gulp build tool. Uh, from the previous tutorial, which we uh, basically enabled the auto refresh for the browser when we save the code. If you haven't watched that tutorial, uh, go ahead to my channel uh, and uh, watch it. Otherwise, there is a link down down to this video that you can watch it. So the idea for this tutorial is that. I want to introduce a tool called um, SAS, which is a CSS extension language. The link is, you know, to the right. You can go ahead and read about it. But the whole idea is that, you know, SAS and some other sort of languages like Less enables you to write less CSS code, uh, or let's say their own sort of language code and then they have compilers to compile that code which is pretty much like CSS uh, to, to the actual CSS and the, the, the reason why is that it, it decreases the, the amount of time that you put in development so this is the whole idea uh, for this tutorial and then also I would like to show you how you can concat and minify your JS files and your um, CSS files for production all right, let's get started. Don't forget again to subscribe to my channel uh, so that I can continue making these cool tutorials for you guys. All right, so in the index.html, I have created a header and then I have a navigation that contains an, on, on, uh, an ordered list which contains three links over here. So the idea behind this is that uh, I want to write some SAS code which I'm gonna create the file underneath the SAS folder here. I'm going to call it maybe main.scss, which is the uh, suffix for, for SAS. Uh, and you can see that I have it here. And uh, the idea is that before, in the previous tutorial, I had a main.css. I would like to remove this. What I want to, to do is I would like to let Gulp generate that CSS file using my main.sass file. So for, for like styling the index.html, I'm gonna create a uh, header class. And then uh, you can see that we have a navigation and we have an unordered list. The, so the whole idea with SAS is that you can, you can have nested uh, classes or, or, or you know, styles. Like if I put nav over here, I can go ahead inside it uh, I can go for UL and then I would set maybe margin to zero and board and uh, padding to zero here and inside this I know that LI is the child so it uh, goes inside this and I would do maybe padding 10 pixel and uh, maybe float left so that they get aligned horizontally also I would like my header to have a height of uh, maybe 44 pixel and a background color of maybe F2, 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 which is a shade of gray and a border bottom of one pixel solid and DDD. So now uh, nothing happens. In order to enable Gulp to run the SAS compiler for us and uh, ultimately move the main.css contents in a, in a, in a, in a file uh, as a CSS, uh, what we will do is that we need to install, you know, uh, Gulp SAS. I've already done that, but uh, just, just to show you how you run it, just npm install Gulp SAS and also I would like to add it to my package.json. All right, let's, see, let's say that it is installed. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to require that in my Gulp file as SAS, and I'm going to create a new Gulp task. I would like to call it SAS, and I pass a function that returns the gulp.src. So this is the source of my you know, SAS file, which is in app, SAS, and main.scss and then I would like to pipe this to the SAS that I required which will compile this 
and then I would pipe it again to gulp.dest and then I will want the destination to be my CSS folder. So, all right. So if I go ahead now in here and if I do gulp sass, you'll see that it generates, it gets the content from this and generates a very nice main.css file and put it in the CSS folder, as you can see here, right? All right, cool. So from now on, whenever we want to change this file, we want to, you know, um, refresh the browsers. In order to do that, we need to modify um, this function. So at the end, I would like to actually pipe to, to browser sync, and I would obviously want to reload, right? And I would pass stream true. So the idea behind this is that whenever SAS compiles, you also want to reload the stream. And then we need to modify the watch function that we have developed from the previous tutorial um, and remove this line because we don't want the browser to reload when we change things in this file because from now on we want to modify things in the main.scss but instead what I would like to do is that whenever I run the gulp watch from the terminal I would like to actually before that run the sass along with browser browser sync which spins up the browser uh, the server and then I would like to put a watch on my app.sass folder and my main.scss and I would like to run the sass. So what happens is that whenever I change something on main.scss uh, this, this task will get run and um, you know consequently it runs the reload and uh, you can see the changes in the browser. Okay let's see how it works. So if I do gulp uh, watch, you'll see that the browser comes in, you'll see that you know we have whatever we have developed in our main.css over here. So what happens is that whenever you you know modify this and save this, it injects this here uh, and then it reloads the browser. Let's see how it looks. Let's just remove all the borders from the body. So I would remove the margin, sorry, margins, so margin zero. And if I save this, and if I go ahead here, and let's see if I have any error here. No, I don't. And also I have my watch function. So, and also padding to zero on my body, right? So now if I sort of save this, you'll see that nothing happens. Let's see why. In gulp file, we have our SAS which has app sass main.scss this is correct and this is this, all right there you go you have pipe you want browser sync reload and here you want the app.csass.main.scss to run the sass function uh, let me just run this gulp watch again all right now if i modify something in my SAS, let's say I want a padding of 10 pixel, boom, you'll see that it starts working. There was a, a little glitch over there that is fixed now, so I will return it to zero and uh, everything works uh, as expected. So the next step is that let's say you have a bunch of you know CSS files, a bunch of JavaScript files, and you want to you know, make them ready for production. And what that means is that obviously in production or on your website, you want the load to be as less as possible. So to do that, we're going to concat all of these files together. So all the, all the CSS files and all the JavaScript files. Uh, and then we use a technique called uglify, which is basically minifying your source codes and then you use them instead in your index.html over here um, so they have less load on your server because they're they are really really smaller than um, the original versions in order to do that we have to install two I'll close this you have to install two new modules so I would do npm install um, gulp uglify 
this basically uglifies or minifies. Uh, the, the idea is that it, it will minify the JavaScript files. And apart from gulp uglify, um, we need to install something called, called gulp uglify CSS. So this basically uglifies or minifies the CSS files that uh, we give it, uh, give it to him. And uh, then the other one is gulp concat. So concat is, the reason why we use concat is that we want to concat the content of all the files that we have together so that they have less capacity. All right, let's get started. Let's go to Gulp and let's do another task. Let's call it, you know, um, maybe uh, concat mean js, and then we do function. I would like to return gulp.src. So whatever I have in my app js folder right um, JS and I will pipe it to um, um, we have, first of all we have to of course require those modules so concat is gonna be require ring the gulp dot concat and also I will do the same for uglify which is gulp uglify for our JavaScript and then we do the same for gulp uglify CSS, and I would just type uglify CSS, right? So now I will pipe it to uh, concat. And the good thing with concat is that it gets a parameter that you can change or, or introduce the name of the uh, concated uh, JavaScript file, so the final JavaScript file. I will call it all.mean.js. And Later on, I would like to uglify this, right? I would run uglify, and then I would like the destination of it. So I will pipe it to gulp dest to be here in my dist folder or my distribution folder, right? There you go. I would just copy and paste the same thing uh, for the CSS, so mean CSS. I would like my CSS files, so CSS, I would like to be all.mean.css, and I will put it uh, here, but also I would like to run the uglify CSS instead of uglify, which is for JavaScript. And finally, in order to do both of these tasks at the same time, I would define a task called concat minify uh, or mean, and I would just give these two, so concat mean.js and concat mean.css as the second parameter, right? So here you can see that we have a main.css. We don't have anything in my j... Ah, okay, I, ha I added a little bit of jQuery uh, before in my main.js, so let's see how it will look like. So if now I run gulp um, concat mean, let's see what happens. There you go. If I go back in my dist folder, you can see that two files are generated, all.mean and all.mean.css. You can see how it sort of minified this and also minified my JLs into one line instead of this, right? So uh, here in this, in this uh, you know, application, we only had one CSS file and one JS file, but uh, these commands in, in that we introduced here, all these tasks will go ahead and concat all of the files in CSS, all of the files in JS, uglify them, and put them here. So <clears throat> I hope uh, you like this tutorial. Please go ahead again, subscribe to my channel, uh, and let me create more cool tutorials for you. Have a good day and goodbye.